I can't see Mary, but I see Mary's name. Oh, there's Mary's picture. Okay, I got it. Okay, let's start. We are all here. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. What was that from? It's a musical. Does anybody remember? It is a musical. I'll go that. Huh. Okay, we'll have to figure it out for the next step. All right, so um, let's pray, and we will jump in. Scooby do the musical. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me, this is going to be a night. Huh. All right, God, we need Jesus. Father, we declare we need Jesus. Lord, we need you. God, thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your provision, your grace, your presence. Thank you for walking with us through our days. Thank you for giving us wisdom and guidance and understanding. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray right now that you'd open our eyes to see your word. You'd open our ears to hear. Lord Jesus, we declare you're Lord. We declare Jesus Christ is Lord. We declare Jesus is Lord over my home. Jesus is Lord over my business and my families. My family, my business is my family. Jesus is Lord over all of our endeavors. I just declare it. Lord, I pray that you send your angels to garrison about our home to protect and shield us from the attacks of the wicked one, Lord God. And for everybody that's joining us online, I pray that you would shield and protect their homes. Lord, that you give them grace and watch over them, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. Let us enjoy your peace and your presence as we jump into your word. Open our eyes to see, Father. Give us eyes to see and discern, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okie dokie. So, um, we have done, we did, past tense, we did, went through Revelation uh, 7, 8, uh, 7 and 8 last week. Uh, if you weren't here and haven't gone through it, you should go through it. There was something I thought of that I wanted to point out. Um, from last time, before we get started on this time, because I think it's noteworthy, I, I, I like to make a point to focus on things that Scripture doesn't say, right? Um, when Scripture ends up speaking without using words, I want us to think about what it's not saying. And I've given a few of these things to you. Like, for example, uh, back in Matthew 24, woe to mothers who are with child and who are, feed, who are breastfeeding in those days. And we talked about why. Like, what's the one thing that pregnant mothers and lactating mothers share in common? What is it that would be woe unto them? Like, woe, woe to you. Like, you're, this is not a good thing, right? What would be the one thing that would cause them, the common occurrence that would cause both of them to be concerned, a pregnant mother and a lactating mother? And we discussed how famine, lack of food, lack of water, right? In both cases, a mother, for a, mother's, for a mother to either develop breast milk the way that she should, or for a mother to develop a growing baby the way that she should, she has to have nourishment, she has to have water. Without those two things, the baby's not going to survive, and she's not going to be able to breastfeed. So we know when Jesus says, whoa, whoa, to mothers and to those who are, who are, who are feeding their children, we know that what the Lord is actually saying is, there's going to be a time of difficult food and a difficult water. It's going to be difficult to find food and water during those days of tribulation. So without saying... There's going to be a lack of food and water. We were told there will be a lack of food and water because that's, what's, that's what would cause a lactating mother or a pregnant mother to have difficulty. <clears throat> uh, so when we have these circumstances like that, I want to point them out. So there was one in, in the... Uh, uh, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, okay. So back in chapter 7, uh, verse... Um, verse 14 through verses 14 through 17. So Revelation 7. So this wasn't last week, it was week before, but I just thought of it this week, so I just wanted to point it out. 
So Revelation 7, uh, well, 13. We have this group of people who are underneath the altar. In chapter 7, verse 13. One of the elders answered and said to me, What are these who are arrayed in white robes, and from whence did they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And remember we talked about how that was a smart answer? John's in this dimension. He's seeing all these things that are beyond his capability to grasp. Sights and sounds and colors and, and I would imagine fragrances because... In the last chapter we read, if you remember, he talked about the angel putting incense, right? Incense would be a fragrance. So John is getting a fully immersive experience here. This isn't just, it's not just seeing a picture on a screen, right? When I shared, the, when I shared with you all the vision that I had of the woman who was, when the rapture was happening, the, the catching away of the church was happening, the woman was up there and she was singing. I was trying to explain to you, I, in that vision... When I had that, I had, vi I, I had vision, obviously. I could see and I could hear, right? Because I was trying to explain the pitch that she had, and I can't tell you other than it was perfect. I mean, I've never heard a voice before like that. I've never heard a voice since like that. It was just perfect. And uh, I don't remember any kind of fragrance in that experience that I had, right? I, don't, and I do remember a sense of time. I, like I was thinking about this the other day when we were talking how John had a sense how he said it was quiet in heaven for the span of about 30 minutes, right? I do remember being, you know, when that was happening, I do remember having a sense of time and watching things happen. Like, because I remember seeing it. Scripture says that when the rapture happens, it'll be a catching away that's a twinkling, that's a blink of an eye. In other words, boom, like that. The other, the, the dream that I had that I shared with you about what I thought was a tornado, and as it started coming towards Mary and me, what I saw were bodies coming out of graves, and it wasn't really a tornado, it was dirt flying off of graves as people were going out, and about that time, boom, we went through the roof of the car, and we were pulling three, four Gs, probably. I mean, it was like crazy, the amount of resistance against my body as I'm going up through the air, right? Um, so, Scripture says that it's the twinkling of an eye, it's like blink, and you're just gone, right? Uh, but what I remember seeing, I had a sense of time because it was happening in slow motion. Everybody was just moving very slowly. It's about that fast. So it was like the Lord slowed down what was happening so that I could perceive what was happening, right? Um, John, in his vision, has sight, sound, smell, all of it. He's got full senses in this. Sense of time. So he, <clears throat> he says, sir, you know... He's overwhelmed. He's like, you tell me. And, he, and the man, the elder, said to me, These are they which come out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they're before the throne of God and they serve Him day and night in His temple. So, we were talking about these people versus the other ones. The other people have been given white robes. These people wash the robes of the blood of the Lamb, if you remember. They're, in, they're serving God at His temple. We know that the temple of God exists only in heaven. And in the New Jerusalem, we're told that there is no temple, that, this, that Jesus and the Father are the temple of it. So they, in other words, there's no physical structure of the temple. They are the holy place. So we know that what we're reading here is actually happening in heaven. So we, I'm, I'm setting the stage here because what we're going to read is telling us things that, it's saying things without saying things. All right? So these are people in heaven, washed their, blood of, washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb, came out of great tribulation, Jesus followers in heaven with God, standing before his throne. This is not later on. This is still in heaven. Heaven, is, heaven still exists at this point. And listen to what he says. He that sits on the throne, verse 15, the second half, verse, the B, B part of 15. And he that sits on the throne, Jesus and the Father, will dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither, neither shall they thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne will feed them, will lead them to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away their tears.